Hello out there and welcome to my channel. My name is Milesy. Today we're going to be doing some stuff with this frog here. Some people have been asking for this particular frog as a pattern. You've uh, probably seen it on Twitch. He's one of the emotes. Uh, he's been on a needle minder. And some people want him as a pattern, so let's go ahead and do that. And first we have to do a little bit of fixing up because as you can see I've got stuff on a few different layers particularly that outline. It doesn't really work down here. Uh, it works fine when it's really small and you can't really see that detail, but we need to clean this up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I need to get rid of the needle itself so that we can put a line right here without disrupting anything. Because if I select this and then go over here and erase, it leaves a white line that I don't like. And there are ways around that that we can kind of do. Let's see if we invert the selection and then just give it a couple of increments in and then invert it again. How does that help? Actually, I think we can just about live with that. That's cool. So we'll do that down here as well. Get rid of this. And then there's some yellow, which I believe is that one. Yep. So there we go. That was an easy fix. Cool, cool, cool. Now, what we need to do is I'm going to deselect everything. Merge that down, bring this up here, underneath, I think. Hmm. So what I'm going to do, here's what we'll do. So it's underneath, so it's not quite attached just yet, but it's where it needs to be. So with those merged, we're going to go up to layer. No, I don't want to merge it yet, that's right. So I want to preserve the opacity and make the whole thing white. Now we can merge it. Okay. Now we'll bring it up here. So there we go. So now if we go to layer luminance to transparency, that has gone and that's perfect. So we're going to select our eraser and just erase the lines where we don't need it. So here we go. A lot of lines that we don't really need, so we can get a bigger brush. Woo! There we go. Okay. And now we have to be a little bit more careful down here. There we go. There's that. We don't need... Ah, that actually could be beneficial just right there. It's a tiny little bit, but it does kind of indicate that there is still a needle behind the frog. So that's fine, that can stay. So we come down here, erase, erase. Using multiple layers when I do my line work is a big part of how I get it to look the way it does. I've had some people tell me that I work too slowly and too deliberately, but you know what? I don't care. I like the way it looks. So there we go. There is that. Let's get rid of the color just to see that it does look right. And I think so, yeah. That looks about right, so we're going to merge these together. Bam! Now all of the line art is on one layer. So, okay. Now what we can go ahead and do is... I need to crop this very badly, so we'll go Selection, Invert, and I'll just increment it out a few times, just so that we don't lose too much of the outline there. We want to keep some of it. We don't want to completely cut into the outline because that will screw us up a tiny bit. So we go canvas, crop by selection, and when we deselect, we've got a little bit of a margin to work with on all four sides. So 
that means that we can go in here and save this file save as and we'll save it as a pattern why not um oh that's not where i want to no one wanted this one Now we have to find it, because it doesn't automatically go there for some reason. And we're going to save it as a PNG. PNGs are very important. Never save as a JPEG. So save. And having each pixel have opacity. This is Paint Tool Sci that I'm using. It has some very bad English, but selecting that one will make all of the white transparent. We don't want that. We want the white to stay, so we're going to click OK. And now we're going to open up paint.net. And while paint.net's opening, we're going to go back to that folder, which I probably should have opened ahead of time, but didn't think about it. So now that paint.net's open, we'll go ahead and just drop our frog in, open the image. And this is quite big. We don't want it that big. Uh, so let's go image, resize, and we're going to scale by best quality. We're going to maintain the aspect ratio. Uh, I think I want this to be about 200. Yeah, 200 by 74. That's going to be quite small, but that's fine. And now if we zoom in a bit, we can see that when we resized it, we lost all of those margins. So that was good. So now what we need to go ahead and do is go to brightness and contrast, jack up the contrast. We need to jack down the brightness quite a bit. But I think, I think that preserves as much of the detail as we're going to be able to preserve at the scale. So let's hit OK. And now I'm going to come back here, close this. I don't want to save it because I do want to keep that file as it, as it was. And we're going to bring the frog back. And what I am going to go ahead and do now is Go into my artwork over here and find that frog. If he is anywhere, there he is. Because I do want to keep his detail as much as possible, so I'm going to do the same here. Canvas, change size, nope, change resolution. And height is 200 by 74. Wait a bit. I don't know why Psi works in fractionals, but it does. So A selects all of it. C copies it. Now we're going to come over here. That's not what I needed. Do not save. I didn't save you. There. Now it's saved. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's fine. There he is. That's correct. Layer, now we're going to go to luminance to transparency. And we're going to paste the frog and put him underneath. And that kind of gives us a good starting basis because I like these colors. I spent a lot of time on them. I don't want to try to um, figure everything out the hard way. So we'll just paint over it and we can do this, we can just even grab the color from right there, and then I'll drop it down just so that I can tell where I'm coloring. So I'm here, we're gonna go for, uh, we'll just fill in the whole thing with, oops, selection source, forgot to do that. We'll just fill in the whole thing, just like this. And that's just to give us a good base of color to make sure that we don't miss anything. 
We don't need to fill in the whole thing, but I like to. Is that a leg? No, it's not. Couldn't tell what was right there. But filling in everything lets us know where we need to be coloring later on. But that's fine. Okay, so now we'll get rid of you. Bring you back up. And we'll go for the yellow now. And now we have a good base of color to put everything on top of. So we'll create a new one and we're not going to bring this one back. We're going to keep that one hidden. We're going to go to the legacy pen. And we'll start off with three and see how it goes. And we're just going to kind of very gently come in here and color everything that we can. There we go. There's that. And if we select that, we can see where we've missed. We're going to come over here now and do the same, just kind of swoop in here, get all the colors. A little bit back here. And kind of like that, I think. Let's see. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Round that out, I think. Yep. And now we just have a little bit of yellow on his little hands and feet. So we're gonna color that in. Just like that. And it's okay if it's a little bit blocky. It's supposed to be. Okay, there we go. I think that works just fine. And now I'm going to do the blue one next. And we'll do the same. And I'm going to put it over the green but under the yellow. Because that'll make it a little bit easier to come in here and do this. I don't want like that. That went out too far. Oh, I'm just going to kind of do, 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 do. And by going under the yellow, but over the green, it makes it to where we don't have to be constantly mindful of coloring anymore inside the lines. Okay. Can I get all of this? Now it looks, oh, we've missed a bunch. Okay. Missed a whole bunch, so let's drop that down a little bit so we can see what we're doing a little bit better. So we want to color that in. I kind of want to get these as well. Bip, bip, bip. Right there, right there. Yeah, I like that. Just a tiny little line of white. Same right here. We'll Bring that up a bit. Tiny little line of, line of white. And then we'll go whoosh. And then we'll go whoosh. Down here. Like that. Okay. And we'll see how that looks. Yeah, I kind of like that. Okay. Where do we have some more blue? Right here. There we go, but like this, like that, like that, and then we'll come in here. About like that, I like that. A little bit of blue down here. And now the next two colors, now that we've done all the heavy lifting with the blue, are going to be very easy. The blue and the yellow have done all of the work for us. So we go in here. And I'm not using flipping groups today just because of the way 
But I have to keep taking, uh, taking the visibility off this. When you take the visibility off, it breaks the, uh, the clipping groups. So that's why we're not using those today. And we're going to come in here. And just do these little lines of blue on his feet. And I think I like that. Let's see. Yeah, I think I like that. Okay. So get rid of you. Bring you all the way back up. Now it's time for some orange. We'll grab it from right there. And again, over the green, but under the blue. And we'll drop this down just to make it easy to tell where we've been. And now, because we're underneath the blue, we don't have to worry about coloring in the lines too much. We grab over here. And then we come down here. Okay. And we just want to try to make this look as round as possible. It's not always easy with the kind of pixelated style, but we can do it. And what color is around his eyes? Was that supposed to be yellow? I think that was supposed to be yellow. So we're going to come back here, grab some more yellow. And do those bits around his eyes. And I also forgot to get that little bit of orange up there on his other hand, but that's fine. Okay. There we go, I like that. That works. So we'll come back down here and grab this orange as well. Make sure that we're on the right layer. There we go. If we do this, how's it look now? Oh, missed a couple. That's fine. There we go. Otherwise, yeah, we are looking good. So now all that's left is the white. And I just noticed also we are missing a little bit of line right there, which I don't want to lose, so I'm going to put that back. Just kind of a subtle little line. There we go. And again, over the green, under the orange. So we don't want that one. That's too big. And we'll just kind of, oops, drop you down pretty far. Because I never really quite use exactly white. By using colors that aren't white but very close to it, you can get a better depth of color. Okay. Now this is kind of hard to see what I'm doing just because we are still dealing with some very light colors that I don't want to accidentally cover color over in green. I'm kind of having to be pretty careful here, but we'll get there. Okay, there we go. And then this little bit up here. I don't think there's anywhere else for white. I'm going to turn you off. And just to double check, we're going to make another layer in the back. And we're going to make it like pink. Because there's no pink in this. Oops. Working layer, please. And this shows us if we missed anything, and we did not. So, good. Good, 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 good. So now we're just going to come over here. And grab that red. Over the green. Under everything else. And, oops. And this one. If we hit the right one, we can just fill in. And there we go. That's our base color, so we don't need you anymore. We can put you back on. So now all we need is the needle, which we can do on any old layer as well. And we're just going to make that kind of a bluey silver color. So like right here. And go bap, bap. There we go. 
And that's our color filled in. And there we go. We could just release this guy right here as is, but I want to uh, have some more fun with him. So here we go. Just kind of doing some double checks. Looks like everything is good. And we are going to start doing some shading. So we're going to create a new layer group. We're going to set it to multiply and layer inside. So he's kind of all over the place. He's got a variety of colors in him. Normally what I would do is take the contrast in color. So if he had a lot of blues and greens, I'd take kind of a brownish color to shade. If he had a lot of browns and oranges and yellows, I'd take a bluish color to shade, but he's got both. Uh, but since the main kind of color on him is this kind of green and the blue, we're going to take some brown. And we don't want it to be too brown. We just want it to have a hint. So we can see that our saturation is about six. That's all we want. That is all we want. We're going to take the legacy pen and just kind of give it a quick swipe just to see how it looks. It's a bit dark, but we can fix that up, so that's fine. And we're just going to kind of come in here and do some shading. And we'll say that the light source is coming from about over here. So all of his shadows are going to be on this side of him. So we'll start over here. And kind of put some shadows on his face. And again, I don't like to shade the eyes. It's just kind of a personal thing. I feel like it looks better when you don't. We can get a little bit of a shadow underneath here. And then this over here is all going to be in shadow. Not with that, yeah. Make that a little bit more kind of connected over here. And then we'll do that. And that looks good. We get a bit of shadow over here on his little snout. Come in here on his finger. There we go. And just a little bit here where his eye kind of pokes out. Because it's not going to be completely uniform. There's going to be a little bit of shadow here where things connect. Now back is going to be easy. We're just kind of going to fill in so that we don't color outside the lines. And then I want it to be about right there. Yeah, and then we'll connect these up so that he all looks like he's one piece. And then his arm is going to be casting a shadow outward like this. And we'll smooth that out a little bit. So there we go. His arm is also going to be in shadow a little bit. And about right here as well. And don't always just follow the line. You have to kind of be a little bit mindful of the shape of the item, so, or the object. So we could have just followed the line, but his arm has some muscle there, so we want to make sure that actually comes across. And then over here we come. Shade this, a little bit of shading on his belly. And then, set him down here. Get him right here. Shade him the uh, folds of his skin. Round this out a bit. There we go. And shade him on his leg here. And there's, it went up a little too far out, so let's fix that up. Okay. And that tool right there, all that does, this little guy right here, that just makes it so that whatever tool you're using, that becomes the eraser. So now here's a tricky part, because his leg is bent every which way. This is his knee, and his knee is going to kind of come out like this. We're going to try to make that as round as possible, kind of give it a little bit right there. 
and then we're going to chain everything but the top because now his the top of his leg is what's exposed to the light source one more there we go and everything over here is kind of underneath and behind and that gives us a little bit of depth that kind of shows that his leg isn't just going straight back it's kind of angled a little bit toward the back of the painting or the picture whatever you want to call it and we're just going to do the same over here just kind of shade in his toes get all the little bits That one can be completely in shadow. We'll do a little bit on the underside of his hand. And get these guys. There we go. We gotta do these fingers as well. There we go. And I think I want to do a little bit of shadow right here. There we go. Just to separate his arm from his chest. So there we go, there's the shadows. And now we're going to do the same thing, a new group. Set that to luminosity and put a new layer in there. And now we're just going to add a little bit of highlights and I want a smaller brush for this because I think I just want the one because we're just going to kind of come in here and do just a little bit of highlights. Not everywhere, but just in places where we can uh, get across that he's facing the light a little bit. And that is very bright, but we're going to go back and fix that up. So. We've got that. A little bit over here on his arm can be highlighted. And we don't want to highlight everything that's on his right side because not everything is actually facing the light. We're just going to get the bits where the light is directly touching. Like all of these areas down here, it's not in shadow necessarily, but the light isn't directly touching it. This is, this is more of an ambient light, so we're only getting the bits where the light is directly hitting it. Oops. And put a little bit on that one. Not having a grid sometimes can really screw me up. And I'm gonna put a little bit on his knee. Not much. I don't even like that one. So yeah, about right there. And I think that's all we need for the highlights. We didn't need much on this one, so we're going to take the opacity and drop that way down. That way it's not yellow everywhere, everything is just a slightly lighter version of itself. We're going to do the same here and not drop it down quite as much, but about right there. Make it like a slightly more muted version of itself in the shadow. And we could just end here again, but... I want to give this guy a little bit of texture. So we're going to do the same thing we've done in the past. Now that we have our cell shading down, we're going to create a new layer on top of the cell shaded. And we're going to go to, oh, hello, our canvas acrylic. And we want about a size 10, I think. And we're just going to kind of come in here, and actually I think I want an even darker color. Yeah, there we go. That's what I want. And this is the one where we just kind of make it go everywhere. It doesn't need to be perfect, and we're going to go beyond what we shaded initially. And really kind of Feather everything out, get everything a little bit more, I guess a little less uniform looking. Because the cell shading is pretty much there so that we can just get the shadows down and give them a shape. And then this is where we come in later 
and just make everything look a little bit more organic. So we've got that right here. And I think that's pretty much everything that I want. Looks about right. So we're going to take our little transparent color tool and we're just going to start tapping and removing color. And this tool, I love the, um, the canvas acrylic brush because when we do this and we tap, it erases and it blends the colors out and it kind of feathers them a bit. And the more you tap, the lighter and more blended it gets. So that's what we're just doing. We don't want it to be everywhere, but we want it to be there. And sometimes I think I go a little overboard, so we'll just add a little bit more. Okay, there we go, there we go. And another thing we can do is we can come up here and give it like kind of more of a rough texture. And that can give the frog a little bit of texture. There we go, I like that. That gives the frog a little bit more texture and it helps blend the colors out a little bit better, which is really useful on these small ones. But I wanted to do a small one here because I've been doing so many big ones lately that it's kind of hard to keep up with them. So let's do a small one. And then we're going to go bit, 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 bit. Kind of come in here. Really erase on that knee because I wanted that to be in the light and just kind of feather out what we've done on his hands a bit and his feet. Okay, uh, get his belly. So we've done that. It's kind of there. Could use a little bit more help. Let's erase in there a little bit. But that's pretty flat. So we're going to now, on the same layer, take some really dark... Well, let's go with purple. About right here. And we're just going to kind of start blending that in. Eh. Actually, we'll put this on a new layer. It doesn't really seem to want to blend, but that's fine. We'll just keep going until we find a nice dark one that we like. There we go. A little too dark, but we can lighten that up. And this is so that we can get the really deep shadows in here. So we're not doing everywhere. We're just doing the places that are in a lot of shadow. So like right here, right here. But right here. Yeah, maybe right there. Oops. And we're just going to do the same thing. Kind of erase it a little bit hard in some areas. Just so that it doesn't feather out too much. And this just gives us some good depth. It gives us some good color variation. Really come in here and do that. Come down here. There we go. And what we can do now is come up here. I guess we don't really have to. We can just do that. And we'll select everything that's not the frog. Oops. Oh, we're on anti-alias. That would do it. There we go. Turn that off. What that tool does, if you could actually click where you're meant to click, is it softens up the lines a bit. But since we're, we've got very pixelated lines, I don't want those lines soft. 
So now we've selected everything but the frog, so we're just going to delete the shading that we don't want. Deselect, and there it goes. And I don't like to have the frog selected when I do the shading because it makes it hard for the uh, for everything to blend out the way that we want it. And in fact, I kind of want to grab these and delete from there as well. No shading on the eyes. We are going to add some highlight to the eyes, but no shading. And that just always makes them really stand out. Maybe a little bit of shading, but probably not much. So now we're going to come up here and do the same thing. We're going to grab another kind of light brownish color. Not like right up here canvas acrylic and just kind of lay down some color and let's get let's go for five I think ten was a little bit too big so we want about right there about right there uh, we can add a little bit right there a little bit right here get on his arms on his hands And on his legs right here. A little bit right there. Why not? Okay. And now we just feather it out again. And for this I'm going to go back to 10. 10 was a good feather. And we're going to drop this down. About right there. I want it to be bright, but not like stupidly bright. Okay, we're just kind of going in, smoothing and feathering some things out, giving it a little bit of texture here and there. And. I don't even think this guy needs a second layer of highlight because that looks pretty darn good. So we're going to do the same thing. Just select everything that's not frog. Even get his eyes this time, just in case. Yep. And D deletes everything in this software. There we go. And there's the frog. He's looking pretty good. I'm pretty pleased with him. So now let's go ahead and do his eyes. And I do want to use this. I'm gonna go right here and right here. Do I like that color? No, not really. I think for this one, I'm going to go for a nice red, but very desaturated, very high value. So like right here. Yeah, there we go. That's about what I want. And then we're just going to do the same thing. Just kind of feather that out a bit. And then we'll delete everything that isn't in the eye. And then kind of, uh... Just smooth that out as much as possible. Eh, I don't even like that. I don't like that at all. Let's go for the pencil. I think the pencil is what we want. And we're gonna put it on very light. Right here. Yeah, I think that's more what we wanted. I think that's exactly what we wanted, okay. And then we pull. Ooh, that's huge. Erase off of right there, because we don't want it. And we will go ahead down here and take a saturated low value red, about right there. Take the pencil and just kind of go in with the pencil, I think. We don't want it to be... Well, actually, I want that on its own layer, though, because we are going to want to fiddle with that, so... There we go. New layer, please. Because we are going to want to fiddle with that, and fiddling with that on the same layer would cause problems. Okay. 
And then we're going to take the airbrush. And we're going to set the airbrush to erase. And just really smooth that out. We don't want a lot of texture in his eyes. Because his eyes shouldn't have a lot of texture. Yeah, I think I like that. And then we'll just do the same thing. Take the legacy pen. The legacy pen is small enough that we is the eyes are small enough. There we go. That we can just do this with the legacy pen. And then we need to get this bit up here because that came back. And now what we can do to give those eyes some textures, we can come down here, find them on this layer. And we're going to go to water. Now it's hard to see, but if we scale it down a little bit, it gives it kind of like a veiny texture. So we're just going to have very subtle. And I want it in both eyes. It doesn't really want to get there, so let's try water too. No, water too doesn't want to be there either. Watercolor? One of these. Neither of them really seem to want to be in there. There we go. We'll go with that. And that just gives the eyes a little bit of texture. And there we go. That's our frog. I'm not going to import this because it always seems to crash my recording. So there we go. We have done a little frog pattern. This will be available on Patreon to you guys out there. I will probably, oh, let's do up the needle too. I'll probably do that off camera, just all the same principles. But this will be available to patrons and it will be up on Commissio once I have stitched it or at least stitched enough of it to be comfortable with knowing how it works. However, with the new floss index, that seems to be happening quicker and quicker. So thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing. All that fun stuff, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.